Hello and welcome to another episode of The Message, where we talk about what you're talking about. Hi, I'm Ethel Reeves, Director of Equity and Community Relations, and today I have joining me our superintendent, Dr. Crystal Edwards, and we have a community member, Andre Whitehead, many of you know him, with Whitehead Media Ventures. Thank Andre, you. thank you for being here. The pleasure's all mine. Awesome. You all, um, as you know, we did an episode of The Message on bullying last week. And there continue to be conversations in our community about LCS's response to allegations of bullying, assault, fights, those kinds of things. Um, as we do in the Community Relations Department, whenever we have a media request, we ask the uh, reporter, the, the uh, media source, to provide us with some questions so that we can be uh, prepared and, of course, um, provide information that will be helpful to you, our community viewers. So today, um, Andre has provided us with some questions. We want to make sure that we answer those and that we also give way to um, just making sure the community is clear on what we are doing here in Lynchburg City Schools. Okay? Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, <laughs> And I'll just go through, you asked if uh, we are aware of the fights, assaults, and bullying that parents, and the bullying that parents are concerned about. Um, there was someone who, of course, uh, indicated that calls are not being responded to by LCS. Um, they wanted to know if a child retaliates for bullying, uh, would they be punished and not the bully? Uh, another question is, how can these fights, assaults, and bullying be resolved? And then should parents call the LPD? about bullying claims. So we'll have that conversation. Um, Absolutely. But first, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we have a duty to protect our students. So we will not be talking about specific students or specific incidents here because we do have a right to protect and keep our students safe. That being said, we will talk about our process. And thank you for agreeing to come on our show. Thank you to our community members who continue to make this a topic of discussion because this is something that we here at LCS take seriously. And bullying is all of our problems it right is. now. It is everyone's problem. Um, one thing we start with, the actual bully, right? And I think I heard on your show one of the parents say, if I were superintendent, what would I say? What would I do? And it would be to call the parents and talk to them about bullying and the behaviors that maybe their child is the bully. And we do have resources for that. We have a, a wonderful student services department who can work with families. We do want families to know that we're working together with our families and our students to address the bullying issues, but also address the aggression that is coming from our students. And what can families do to support their kids so that they don't turn to bullying as a means of expression. So that, that's number one. And for our students who find themselves as the victim of bullying, and I think one of your questions were, how do we respond and if we respond? Please, please, please let us know. I don't think you know how often we hear about, uh, this has been going on for a while and I call downtown. And one of the things that we do is check all of our records and make sure like, did we miss a call or did we, did we not hear from parents? And often, sometimes we don't know that this has been going on for a while. And sometimes we're finding out when you're finding out. So we do want our students and our community members to let us know. The most important thing that you can do is not wait. Don't wait until it's been weeks or months of this aggressive behavior. Contact your teacher, contact your school counselor, your school principal, assistant principal, and let them know what is going on in, in the schools. And then we have resources within the schools. We have resources for our staff training. Um, we have a whole student services department that whose one of their major jobs is to address bullying and not only provide support and counseling, um, but also to help with the discipline um, when it comes to bullying. I think one of the questions was, what happens to the bully or the victim when they retaliate um, from bullying? Well, if we're there, we've gone too far, right? And that means that we've waited too long. We don't want our students retaliating against each other. We don't want to see the aggressive behaviors in our schools. We want to make sure that our schools are safe, nurturing places. We want our students to see something, say something, and report it to us and not feel like their only avenue is to retaliate against the bully. 
But what happens when we do this, each investigation is done individually. All of the circumstances, all of the, the events are included in that investigation. And just like our model says, it's one kid at one time. And we treat each one um, as this individual circumstance between, between the children. So if I could jump in, ladies, first of all, again, thank you for having me. Um, so are you saying that, of course, LCS is aware of these bullying claims? I just want to kind of go over these one at a time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for people who are watching and saying, well, they act like they don't know this is happening. I know you do the message, but some people are saying they're not getting this message. They're not seeing this program. Also, on this platform, people have said that they don't have a, not, they don't have a way to chime in and to make comments. There's no comment section. The comments are blocked. Don't know if that's true. So you guys are aware of what's happening and the, is there an ability for folks to hear the message on this broadcast and respond via comments? So, the, the, so these messages, are, it's not a live message. We send the message out um, through our school messenger system, YouTube, um, and you know, all of our, our methods of um, communication, email. So, and as we said last week about bullying specifically, we want the parents to talk to the, the school first. So to come to central office is not the first step. To talk to the schools is the first step. Okay. So with regard to what we're aware of, if it's been reported, we're aware. So right. if you're asking me, are we aware of every single incident of bullying? We're not aware of what people haven't shared with us. Um, so but, so but, for those who say, they've been calling and leaving messages and they're not getting responses. What is that about? Are, are they misinformed? Are they telling me an, an untruth? Do you have no record of these people reaching out to you mm -hmm. about claims of bullying and the unfortunate things that their family members are dealing with? So without doing specific names, again, mm -hmm. just to protect our students and our families, we do have people that come downtown and um, want to speak to someone and generally they do speak with someone in the student services office. If you do come downtown or if you come down to central office and say I'd like to talk to someone about bullying that the we will direct you to someone in the student services office. So that does occur. We do actually keep records of folks who come down. I in my office we keep records of who calls my office, who contacts my office, who emails my office. And in fact, one of the first things that we do when I have a parent who says, hey, I've shared something with you before, is we do a little research and find out what was that that you've shared with us before, whether it's just an email about another child or, or things like that. So in, to answer your question, yes. However, I will say we cannot respond to what actually has not been reported directly to us if it hasn't made it down directly to us. But as Ethel said, if this is occurring in your school, if this is occurring to your child, the first place to go is at the level where it is occurring. And that would be at the school level. If it's in a classroom, contact your child's teacher. If it's in the lunchroom or in the school building, contact your child's school administrator. And again, don't wait until it becomes a pattern or don't wait until your child says, this has happened multiple times to make that contact. The quicker that we can intervene, the better off it is for all of the students in the school. One of the parents also said that they have spoken to the principal of a particular school, and the principal said that that particular individual and the counseling department knew of uh, ways to deal with bullying, but she went on to say, well, what about the teachers and other staff in the school because they may see bullying happen whereby the principal and the folks at the top, if you will, may not hear of these bullying claims. So is this bullying training and education all encompassing within even the teachers and other staff members in public schools? Yeah, one of the mandatory trainings that we have every year is on anti-bullying and, and bullying, how to prevent bullying, how to respond to bullying. How to spot it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, this, uh, another question they had, um, should they be calling the LPD? Should they report these assaults, these fights, these claims of bullying to the LPD, as well as, as you mentioned, going through the school system, talking to the principals? Well, I would say for any parent, and I'm the parent of five, child, five children myself, that's a personal choice, and it depends on the nature of the incident that 
um, the student or the parent has experienced. I will never tell a parent not to report something that they feel deeply concerned about because after all we're talking that's their child. Um, but we do want to be notified. I mean, if the school system is going to partner with the parents and also with any other agency within the city that is working together, we would like to be notified of it. And of course, as I gave you the questions for parents who are telling their kids, it's time to retaliate. And they said, you saw some of the video, if they're worried about their child retaliating, but yet that one who was defending themselves gets punished, gets some kind of reprimand where the bullies continue to do their job and bully others? So I would say to that, in our schools, we just don't condone any kind of violence in our schools. Um, and we don't want students um, getting into fights or cyberbullying or um, taking matters into their own hands in a way that is not um, constructive in terms of remediation. So to that, to that um, comment that you make, no, we don't want to encourage additional violence in our schools. We don't want occur additional violence in our city. We're also seeing some of that uptick in our city. And we as the adults have to be role models for our children as to how do we do conflict resolution when we have conflict? How do we handle uh, power dynamic dynamics when we do have that? Um, but violence is not the answer to that and certainly not violence in our schools. Agreed. One of the things that you asked about is how do parents respond? How do they get in touch with us? Um, what do parents do? We even uh, saw on, on, the, um, on the press conference. Um, the thing about this is that um, we will share last week's recording that has my number. Uh, my office handles family and community engagement, which is why we have been um, adamant about making sure that our community knows how serious this is. Um, we don't take um, bullying allegations lightly at all. We understand that our schools need to be safe and our students need to be in an environment where they can learn. So we ask that parents reach out to my office. I'll make sure that that information is shared. Um, we also ask that parents talk to their children. Uh, ask questions of your children. I too am a parent and it's very easy to ask that question, how was your day? And they say, fine, that's not enough. We wanna make sure that we are knowing who our children are eating lunch with. What did they eat for lunch? What happened in their classroom? What are they learning? And is anyone bothering you? We said last week, if there's, any, if there's ever a time when a child is made to feel uncomfortable, we want to know about it. And so start at that school, talk with the principal, make sure that your concerns are being addressed. And um, again, we want to make sure that you know that we care about all of our children. It is every child, by name and by need, to graduation and beyond. Andre, I want to thank you so can, much can for your time. Can I one more in? Can I one more in? I know you're busy. I want to thank you for having me because I know your plate is full. So to take time out of your schedule to meet with me on such short notice is appreciated. I asked the parents, um, do they understand about COVID and all the issues that the school system is dealing with? Not trying to exclude, excuse mm -hmm. bullying, but could you talk about the complexity, the, all the things that you all are having to deal with at LCS during this pandemic? Not to excuse bullying, as I mentioned, but you guys are fighting many battles and on many fronts. I think we're doing what we can to continue to provide our kids an excellent education five days a week um, in the middle of a pandemic while wearing masks and dealing with that and just some changes that we've seen in our community. Um, in our schools, we do the best to be excellent role models for our kids, but we also see what's going on in our community. We see what's going on in the nation. We can't sit here and pretend that we don't understand what's going on in Ukraine right now. So there are a lot of things. And if we as adults see it and we internalize it and process it, so do our students. Yes. So the best thing that we can do as a community is, is create that nurturing, loving environment for our kids to really, as, as Ethel said, keep an eye on them. Ask them more than how your day was. Ask them, what has inspired you today? At the end of the day, we want both our staff and students to leave our buildings with happiness and joy. Um, and that's what it really should be about. We just had kindness week. We should have <laughs> kindness year. Right. Um, because if we had a little more kindness <laughs> and a little more empathy, we would be much better as a society in terms of dealing with, with conflict. And that is one of our missions to teach young people. How do we do that? What does it mean to be empathetic and put yourself in someone else's shoes? What does it mean to just be kind? And being kind doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with 
all, everything that you do. But being kind sets the tone for reducing bullying. And, and ultimately, that's what we want. And if we can leave LCS with happiness and joy, we have done our jobs. And that's what we want for our students. That's what we want for our staff. That's what we want for our families. And I'm sure every parent out there, if I said, do you want happiness and joy for your child? They would agree with us. So let's all work together. We appreciate that you're here. We appreciate that you're in the mix, in the conversation, because it's only through conversation and open honesty and trustworthy relationships that we are going to address this and actually diminish bullying, not only in our schools, but in our community and in our society. So thank you. Thank Agreed. you for having me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate really appreciate that. To our community, again, this is the message where we talk about what you're talking about. Thank you so much for tuning in. 